Apple is shaking up the buy now, pay later industry, unveiling its long-awaited plans to enter the space earlier this week. And that was enough to send a firm and PayPal shares lower, both initially taking a hit on that news. Paul Golding, Macquarie, a U.S. lifestyle and payments analyst, is here with us to talk about the impact of Apple entering the space. And we also have Yahoo Finance tech reporter Dan Halley joining the conversation. It's great to see you here, Paul. So let's talk about Apple now in the buy now, pay later space. What does that mean for some of its competitors within that industry? Well, uh, thanks for having me on, first off. Uh, what I would say is that the wallet innate nature of iOS, of having the Apple wallet on there and this product being managed through that interface does uh, overcome some of the uh, onboarding or customer acquisition hurdle that you might see with other platforms where an app has to be downloaded. But this is in a sense a standalone product aside from all the credentials that you keep in your Apple wallet and your Apple Wallet balance to the extent that you use it. Uh, and so in our view, uh, while the onboarding may have fewer hurdles, uh, some of the other competing products, uh, which is the context through which we, we view this, our coverage of Block, for example, and Cash App. Cash App has, uh, in our view, much more breadth to its product lineup. And uh, it, to that extent, uh, it can not only uh, attract, but also retain customers in our view around its ecosystem and drive BNPL through that. Paul, this is Dan. Is, is there a risk for Apple here? Just knowing that, you know, they're being looked at by different regulators around the world as far as antitrust goes, as far as, you know, their control of their platform. This is going to be essentially built in to iOS to a degree. I mean, is that a boon for them as well as a problem? Well, we don't cover Apple, we cover the payments names. And so I can't speak to the risk specifically to Apple. What I can comment to is something that we wrote about in the context of our coverage of buy now, pay later across uh, Block and PayPal has pay in for as well. Uh, and the commentary from the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau uh, has been that big tech's entry into this product uh, lineup in this product category uh, could lead to some uh, anti-competitive uh, practices. Of course, we're not uh, attorneys to say either way, but uh, that's some of the, the press that we've seen uh, come out around BNPL and specifically since this product launched. The other piece of it is the extent to which consumer data uh, is continuing to build through an expansion of product verticals uh, that are aggregated uh, by big tech. And so we have to see the extent to which uh, regulators look at BNPL, BNPL's expansion and BNPL going up market in terms of company size that's, that's, and scale that's uh, offering it to see what potential regulatory implications uh, this drives on the back end. And Paul, to that regulation point, our uh, DC reporter Jen Schomberger, she spoke with Rohit Chopra, the a C CFPB a director, earlier today, asked him exactly about that. Let's play a quick clip, and then I want to get your reaction on the other side. We're hearing lots of stories and seeing some data where consumers are getting in over their head. The existing credit card regulation helps protect against some of this. There's some checks on your ability to pay. There's some credit reporting that helps make sure that things are accurate and above board. There's dispute rights. So we've started the process to figure out how can we make sure that buy now, pay later has those similar types of protections. So Paul, some of the uh, similar, I guess, issues or concerns uh, raised there. What do you think when we talk about a potential timeline for this, any idea about what that could potentially look like? No sense at the moment from our side, and again, can't speak to the implications for Apple as we don't yeah. cover it, but in looking at our other BNPL coverage, we've been hearing uh, similar discussion points for quite a while and uh, have not seen uh, material uh, action yet from a regulatory perspective, at least in the U.S. What I will say is that we have seen a uh, progressive industry-wide move towards soft checks on people's credit when uh, they apply for a BNPL loan or installment plan. And so that soft check to some extent 
should check some boxes around appropriateness and credit worthiness and other uh, areas that might be of interest uh, to a regulator or lender. So, Paul, just, you know, looking at kind of the, the competitors in this space, the, 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 the folks that are already ingrained, right? You know, you would you would imagine that they would suffer just because Apple is such a big name. And, you know, I mean, uh, Apple Pay, for instance, has picked up as far as usage goes. So it's not as though this is some kind of, you know, foreign device to people. I guess for the incumbents in the space, does that allow them plenty of space to still grow in the U.S. specifically? Just because so many people are already using iPhones, you know, that makes it a lot easier. Does, does, is there still enough room for, for the others to grow? Or is, is it more now an international game for them? No, we think there's still domestic room to grow specifically in the BNPL category and overall for their ecosystems. Uh, in our view, uh, as I was mentioning before, it's the multiple offerings within an ecosystem that makes them compelling. And then BNPL helps uh, support some of that consumption as well to the extent that it allows uh, easier payback setup or uh, allows uh, for a larger basket size maybe if the consumer would like to make a higher end purchase or a, a larger purchase and it's already within that ecosystem. So for example, if we look at a cash app interface uh, and we have a discover tab and there's a purchase that you'd like to effectuate because uh, you were uh, you potentially received a promotion uh, for a particular product or service. It, the BNPL functionality is right there within that ecosystem and that interface for you. And so uh, as the, the multiplicity of, of product uh, offerings grows in these ecosystems, same goes for uh, PayPal and for Venmo, um, there is uh, the potential for the existing ecosystems, BNPL offerings to become more uh, embedded in how consumers use that ecosystem. So that's a domestic and international uh, opportunity in our view. Paul Golding, we really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a good weekend.